What's up everybody? This is Mark from Ichiban Games and we are back for part two of the Alchemazam card set. So before we get into this, the disclaimer, everything that we said before, say it again, that this video is made for teaching purposes only. In the future it'll be updated. This is in the alpha stage. All information may be subject to change. All art is proxy and placeholder. Some of the art you'll see in the video I own the rights to and is original by the artist that made it. Some art, however, I do not own, which once again is only used for placeholder and teaching purposes only. All art credit goes to the artists. All right, let's get back into this. The first card that we're checking back into here is the Arena Watch Keep. It is a common creature that is a gargoyle of the Earth Faction. Its attack is three attack, defense is three defense, and special defense is zero. Its casting cost is two gold and one glyph. So it has stone proof, it has the empowerment of flight, and when an opponent targets this card to flick it, they must turn two gold and or glyphs to do so. So this card flies, it is stone proof, meaning it can't die if you turn it to stone, and also it is hard to flick. So that is Pretty good common for three, that's for sure. Our next card is Armor of Vindication, which is an uncommon card that is an equipment, a relic, an armor, and of the light faction. Its casting cost is you spend two gold and you use a treasure trove. It has an equip cost of two and a base defense of one. So what does this do here? When equipped at the first upkeep of each player's turn, Armor of Vindication gets one power counter. If it gets unequipped, it loses all permanent counters. Ability, instant speed. Spend two power counters to give a permanent plus one defense to Armor of Vindication or negative one defense to a target creature. So, okay, this card is pretty cool. Basically, if you, every turn you're going to get a power counter, and if the creature has it dies, the power counters will stay on it, but any plus one counters that are on it will get removed. So, basically, you can pump this thing up, for defense or you can knock things down in negative defense and potentially kill them too so this is a pretty cool card that has a little bit of different use here next we have army of one which is a rare instant with a casting cost of spend two glyphs and use one arcane tome or spend two gold and use one treasure trove Target creature you control gets a boost of plus one attack and defense for each creature you control with a juggernaut of three and barrier of five and it can't be stunned, charmed, or affected by damage that has the attribute of fatal. When this card blocks, it deals damage of the full attack amount to each creature. For every creature it kills, your opponent takes one damage. So, yeah, this thing's a, a tank. Uh, it just bypasses creatures, and you need at least three creatures to stop the, the creature if the spell goes on it. And even with that, it is, I mean, depending if you've got a lot of creatures on the field, and even it counts itself as a creature, too, it will do that plus one attack and defense for until the end of turn so that's crazy it can't be killed by fatal and it yeah it it's definitely a strong card for creatures so definitely great and it blocks a lot of stuff too so and if this thing kills things you you damage just 
a, an opponent in general. This is pretty wild. So definitely a great card. Definitely use that card. All right. Next, we have Ascender of the Sky, which is a ultra rare card of a creature human wizard with the faction of air. So its attack is four, its defense is four, and its special defense is zero. And the casting cost for it is one gold, two glyphs, and one treasure trove. All right, so what's this do here? Its ability, when this card enters the field, create two rune stones. Nice. The next ability is when this card does damage, create one rune stone. That's pretty awesome as well. And its magic ability, instant speed, it's an air effect. Sacrifice three rune stones to stun a target creature for the rest of the turn. And then the other magic ability is spell speed that's in uh a, an air faction spell as well sacrifice two rune stones to give target creature the empowerment of flight okay so let's just say that this thing just makes a lot of stuff and you can you know stun something which is great but it makes things fly permanently so it just gives the empowerment of flight it, it, it's great it doesn't have flying itself till it gives itself flight but yeah that that's awesome that's awesome so next we have ash scorpion which is a common card that is a creature card that's a scorpion in the fire faction its attack is three, its defense is three, and special defense is three. It has a casting cost of three gold. So what it does, it has poison, which is one unit of poison, if it's tail attacking. When this card is in the damage phase of combat, you may choose to either normal attack, which is its regular stats, or tail attack, which is the attack is one third its current attack base rounded up okay so when damage is about to occur this is after blocks are declared and, and ready for damage to happen you can choose either to regular attack or tail attack at which if it's a tail attack basically right now with its current attack it would be a 1-3 is how that would be. So you just divide it by 3 and you round up for if it is the whole number of uh, 0.5 and up is always rounded up in decimals if you guys have learned that in school. But anyway, so yeah, uh, this thing is pretty ridiculous where you can hurt things and you can poison things and you can be strategic and how you want to play with it so that's a really cool common card next we have the spell of astral flash which is a common instant card and its casting cost is one gold and one glyph to spend those and when you do that you flick a target creature from your opponent's field back to their hand so it is an nice little flick card so good card for certain things if they use cards to get out on the field that's a that's a pretty strong thing to do for for cards like that so next card is auto crossbow it is a rare equipment that is a weapon artillery bow its casting cost is you spend two gold you spend two glyphs its equip cost is one, and it doesn't give any extra attack, defense, or special defense. So what does this thing do? A creature equipped with this card can block flying creatures. 
When equipped, after declaring combat, choose either preemptive or final for this card's attack speed. It deals three individual hits of one damage each to one target. Targeting. When attacking either target, one creature for full attack damage when including this card's damage, or attack any one target with the auto crossbow's damage when attacking a player. You can only choose one target when targeting unless the creature itself has targeting, in which then that card may naturally target sources as well. Well then, that's a lot of stuff, but this card is ridiculous is what's going on here okay so first things first when you choose the combat of uh, declaring if it is preemptive or final you get to shoot something that is a target regardless if you're attacking or blocking uh that's wild and it does one damage individually each so you can only choose one target for that though so basically you can choose your own creatures if they have like damage triggers or something and set those off three times so that's nuts and then when attacking if you're attacking something you have to attack it full on to choose it that your creature is attacking it as well but if if your creature can naturally do that, you can a attack multiple things. So that's kind of how that works. Where the auto crossbow, if you're attacking the player, you can choose another target to attack as well and shoot that thing. Um, and meanwhile, you're all doing this of, of preemptive damage or final damage. So you could have something hit it and then just kill it afterward or however you want to kind of do it. And technically, you can go and when attacking, you can shoot the player for three damage. So this is a nuts card. It's awesome. And it's... It's got a decent equip cost, but man, that, that's a hefty little spending cost to go and get that thing out. So, good card, though. This is also a really good card for a multiplayer game as well, since you can ping other players as you're attacking other ones. So, yeah, really good card. Next, we have Baneleaf which Baneleaf is a common creature. It is a plant and a creeper. It is one attack, one defense, zero special defense, and it is a one cost of one gold. So it has fatal, and Baneleaf cannot attack. Its ability, though, is you can spend at spell speed two glyphs, and Baneleaf can attack this turn, and... That can't be countered. So what's going on here is this card is a very good defender that can just kill stuff as it pops on through. Uh, even though it can't attack, it definitely can defend, so that's great. If you really want it to attack, it can, but yeah, it's a, it's a great common card, especially for a one-drop. Next, we have Bane of Existence. This is a common instant card that you spend two gold, you spend two glyphs, and you destroy one attacking creature, and then you draw a card. That is pretty effective for if you're doing some resource shenanigans while you are defending and making things hard for your opponent. That's a great card right there. Next we have Barbarian of Blizzards. This is a common creature that is a human berserker and is of the water faction. Its attack is two, defense is three, and is zero special defense. So the casting cost is you turn using 
two glyphs, and it has a juggernaut of two. When Barbarian of Blizzards hits an opponent, it deals two extra damage to that opponent. So, yeah, this, this thing will basically hit a player for four damage. And you need two things to stop it. So that's, that's a very strong common right there for sure. Next, we have Bard of Narcosis, which is a common creature that is a human bard. It has an attack of two, a defense of three, and a special defense of zero. Its casting cost is you use two gold and you use a glyph. Its ability is when Bard of Narcosis enters the field, draw a card. And its magic ability is instant speed. Spend two gold to stun a target creature until the end of turn. So yeah, you get a card and you get to stun creatures. So good little passerby creature here. Next, we have Barrage of Flames, which is a rare spell. And it is a cost of spending three glyphs and using one arcane tome. And this is a spell that is of the fire faction. So this spell is you cast either five singular standalone fireballs for one damage each or three singular standalone fireballs for two damage each. You may choose one or more target creatures and or players per fireball. So this can get pretty, pretty wild here. So first off, it, if, if you were to sling it right to somebody's face, you could either do uh, five damage at just standalone or six damage uh, if you do it as three standalone. And you see, singular pings can matter too. Not only can this just like, oh, I'm going to target up to five things here with this card, but also with this card, if you have something that basically like takes, you know, a, a if it takes a damage trigger and you can do that you can ping that thing and make it just combo and do stuff well that's just that's just super strong this is just a good really strong card in general just even just literally burning your your opponent there so yeah this card is just awesome the next card we have is battering ram of destruction which is an item it's also a tool. So the card is common. Its casting cost is you spend one gold, you spend three glyphs. And what does it do here? At your first upkeep, put a power counter on this card. Physical link ability at spell speed. Spend two power counters, link two creatures, and this card to destroy a target item relic enchantment or equipment spend three power link four creatures and turn to destroy any target creature on the field regardless of empowerment well then so basically this card you can link two creatures and destroy some non-creature stuff and there's that, or you can turn four creatures and this thing to destroy anything on the field that is a creature, regardless if it's hidden or if it is flying or magical, whatever. So this thing is just really really helpful if there's certain types of evading creatures on the field that's for sure 
Super good card. Next, we have Battle Station War Machine. This is an equipment that's an artillery and a vehicle. It's a common card. It costs three gold when you spend it to get it out. And it has an equip cost of two. And it gives a extra base defense of four. So this looks like it's a lot. So what does this got here? So it's got Sentinel. It has a plus four attack when attacking. Its user can't be spell proof, stone proof, and loses all empowerments, but can't be the target of fatal magics and or abilities. When declaring a block, you may subtract the defense of this card and add it to its attack until the end of turn. Physical ability. Instant speed. When equipped and attacking before damage, this card deals one damage to each non-hidden, non-magical opponent creature. This damage does not utilize any attributes of the equipped creature. And a physical ability, instant speed, turn this card when equipped and sacrifice two non-enchantments damage a target creature regardless of empowerment by five so this this card also is a great card for all these evading creatures whether whatever empowerment they may be so first off when it attacks it doesn't turn and it gets a plus four uh, on top of that. So that's great. And even though, like, you could be turned to stone, you could be the target of, you know, some sort of spell, at least you can't be, you know, killed with fatal magic of that spell. So basically they incapacitate you, and that's what's what. But, uh... When you declare the block and you can heighten your attack, that's great. And you can only heighten it to the to this thing's to zero of that. So that'll help. Um, and then <laughs> basically, when you attack, you just do a a shotgun blast, if you will, of just shells. <laughs> or something on the field and hit everything for one damage but yeah and, and if you turn this card uh and you sacrifice whatever that's not enchantments on the field so it could be creatures or whatever you do five damage to any kind of you know hidden magical flying whatever kind of creature regular creatures it doesn't matter so super super good card for doing lots of nasty tactics against nasty creatures so yeah the next card is berserker's rage it is a spell that is a physical styled spell that's a common so this will be a thing that could only be uh, anti-targeting can only evade this one. So this is a three cost of three gold that you need to spend and a target creature you control gets plus one attack and plus one defense until the end of turn. Damage that creature by one and then add one counter of plus one attack, and plus one defense to that creature. You may have that creature fight up to two target creatures of your choice, dealing the same attack damage to both. So, yeah, that's a pretty awesome card right there for creatures that have uh, effects of damage triggers, but not only that, it's where you force fight two things for the full attack power 
of of your creature. So yeah, that that's that's strong, and you'll you'll keep uh, one of those counters on it too. So that's great. So um, even though it'll get damaged by that one, let's say if you have a a creature that's a three three, it's actually gonna be a five four when it attacks, and it'll do five damage to two different creatures if you wanted it to and if it had a a damage trigger then man that goes off too so this is this is great this is really 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 strong next we have bestowing divinity which is an enchantment that is uncommon it is also a blessing and it is magical and it is of the light faction so magical faction and light faction and a blessing so uh this card is two gold and two glyphs and three life points that you need to all spend here so you attach this card to your field its magic ability is at instant speed you can turn this card and spend any combination of these four Spend ingredient cards, sacrifice field cards, discard cards in hand, or subtract life points to give a creature plus two attack and plus two defense, the empowerment of flying, absorb, and associates the creature with the light faction until the end of turn. So this has a plethora of a lot of things going on here that can really aid. So first things first, if it associates it with the light faction, that's cool because, you know, if something's associating with something, it might be able to do things like give things pack or do just, you know, some sort of kind of buff. But this has a buff in general anyway because it's getting two attack and two defense, but... This card is pretty cool because you could use it for offense and defense. You could use it to make things fly and just go and attack the player. Or you can use it defensively where if a, a player tried to do some sort of a, uh, attack that was a magic attack, you could absorb that so you gain life and then also... Uh, you make it flying, so you could stop a, an attacking flying creature. So this does have many good uses to it. Uh, in spending stuff, you could just be like, oh, I'm going to spend four life points, or I'm going to spend uh, uh, two cards out of my hand, and then I'm going to sacrifice two creatures, or whatever way that you want to go and set this thing off. Um, you have a Swiss Army Knife if you will, to uh, get this to go off here. So, yeah, what a good card this is. The next card we have is Binding Wrath, which is a common enchantment. It is where you spend one gold and one glyph. When Binding Wrath is attached to a target creature, that creature cannot attack or block. So... This card will stop all the bad guys, but remember that static abilities and other activated abilities still can go off. But this will definitely take care of some big bad guys that will just be trying to trounce you. So, yeah. The next card is Blazing Phoenix, and this is an uncommon card. That is a creature bird phoenix in the fire faction. So it has an attack of four, a defense of four, and special defense of zero. It is three gold and three glyphs that you use to bring it out. So this card is empowered by flight. When this card deals damage, it gets two power counters. So what is this ability here at spell speed spend one power counter to draw a card and its magic ability at instant speed 
you spend three power counters to give this card immortal for the rest of turn and physical ability spell speed which is a fire ability if this card is in your graveyard turn one treasure trove and one arcane tome to put it back into your hand okay so when you do damage with this card after damage you could just use those power counters just to draw some more cards so that's fantastic or if you are putting pressure on the opponent and you can just keep attacking where you have power counters on this thing and you can have it just be immortal so it won't die yeah that's pretty awesome for that and if it dies anyway who cares you can just bring it back to your your hand but you'll just have to cook up those resources back to to get that back to where you can cast it out again but that wouldn't be too long so that's that's such a good versatile card just to do a lot of things Next is Blind Raid, which is a common instant. And it's, you spend two glyphs and one treasure trove. You blindly take three cards from an opponent's hand and discard them to the graveyard. So when you go and you have your resources ready to go, and you cast this, you're just chucking cards randomly out of your opponent's hand. And yeah, card drought just is brutal for things. So yeah, definitely something there. And for the last card to go over in this section of the set, we are going to look at Boltbringer, which is a common creature that's an elf monk in the air faction. It is a one attack, three defense, zero special defense, and it is a three cost of three glyphs to use. So it has Sentinel, and it has an ability of when this card attacks, you may give an attacking creature the empowerment of flight and can be in the air. And then it has a physical link ability that's instant, and of the air faction which is link three bolt bringers at the beginning of combat if attacking they do damage double their combined attack they may assign this damage to a player as if they were not blocked so okay what's going on here is this is when this thing attacks you can obviously give something flying which that will immediately let it uh, a, a attack flying for the rest of the turn but also if it links it can do that to all three of these creatures together attacking which is bonkers because it will basically go and attack in the air for double the attack power which would be all combined would be three and double that is six and if this thing gets blocked yeah it will do six damage if it even if it does get blocked if you wanted it to to a player instead of it being for uh the creature soaking it up so that is just crazy 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 and it's a common but it's a three drop so get three of those on the field we'll see and that is it for this section of the cards next video a lot more to see Thanks everybody for watching this video and more stuff to come in the future ones. Make sure that you like, subscribe, and share this video. And also hit that notification bell so you can know when the next videos are going to be popping out. 
The game rules on, and card database are on the Google Drive, which you can go to. And you can play the game on untap.in and Tabletop Simulator. Remember, it is free to sign up on untap.in to play this, so there you go. But you need some friends to go and play with, right? So join the Discord and meet others to play with. So get on that Discord. It's a good time. And also just check out the webpage. We have lots of cool other games there, too. So thanks, guys. And more to come with the card database of Alchemazam, the Grand Arcanum. Thanks, guys, and have a good one.